guys, today I'm going to be showing you my best method so far on how to melt down lids from bottles into sheet HDPE material which can be used on almost any DIY project. As you can see here, I've used my HDPE just for slingshots, but you can use it for pretty much anything since it's really strong, very lightweight and also it's completely waterproof. This HDPE is great because it's much much cheaper to make it yourself than to buy it and you can get some really cool and unique patterns out of it by just making it like this. Also, it's completely free to make and it didn't cost me anything to make any of these sheets. And probably the best thing about it is that it can be really easily shaped with just normal woodworking tools. Next week I'll be bringing out a tutorial on how to make this Teohama slingshot completely out of HDPE. But this week I'm going to be showing you just how to make the raw sheet material which the slingshot was made from. In my past HDPE slingshot tutorials, I've put HDPE directly into a slingshot shaped mould and that didn't really work because the HDPE stuck to the mould and it was completely destroyed while removing the final product. Then my next attempts were to make a flat sheet HDPE which then created a flat sheet material which was quite lumpy and bumpy in a very irregular shape, it was in a circle. This did create a lot of waste material and wasn't very time efficient at all. In this news tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the easiest method of creating these square pieces of flawless HDPE on the right. These pieces of HDPE are incredibly strong and they're completely flawless with no air bubbles and they're really really smooth and flat. Also these newer pieces of HDPE have a lot better patterns and are a lot easier to use. I figured out the methods for how to make these sheet HDPE just out of trial and error and I hope that you find this tutorial useful and I hope that it explains everything properly. As you've probably already heard me say, I'm going to be recycling my sheet material from HDPE. They can easily be identified with the 2 inside the recycling symbol or with the letters HDPE below them. The source of HDPE that I'm using is plastic lids from bottles and milk cartons. You can also use the milk cartons themselves but make sure to identify the plastic properly. A lot of people in my last HDPE tutorials had some trouble identifying the different lids and what plastics they were. So sometimes you'll find some lids like this that don't say that they're definitely made of HDPE and you might be unsure whether to use them or not. If you're in doubt don't use them because they might create some fumes in the oven which you're going to be using to heat them up later and that will be really really bad. But if you've got no other lids and you really desperately want to make something then there's a few ways that you can try and identify what plastic it is. So firstly you need to find another lid similar to it that says that it's made of HDPE and you're going to need to compare them. Firstly feel how easy each one is to bend, if they're about similar then it passes the first test. Then see how easy each one is to cut, if they're also about similar then it passes the second test. They should also bend about the same when they're bent along a small join line. For fizzy bottles, the lids need to hold a lot of pressure so they're a lot thicker and harder to bend but almost all of them are made out of HDPE. If we then compare those results to a lid which is made of polypropylene, you can see that it's very very different and behaves differently in all of the tests. So if the lid behaves exactly the same as any other lids made of HDPE, then it's most likely HDPE but I'm not recommending to use it and I just recommend using ones that are labelled as HDPE because they definitely are made of that plastic. Also, it seems obvious, but don't even bother trying to use a lid that's labelled with a different type of plastic like this one made of polypropylene. So now it's time to prepare all of the materials that we're going to melt down. Firstly, you want to clean all of your lids. Get rid of any labels, food or just anything dirty dropped to them and give them a good wash. You then need to select what colours you're going to use. For this project I want to be mixing together blue and green colours but you can pretty much pick whatever you want and just doing random colours looks really nice. For the blue I'm just going to be using all of these milk carton lids. And then for the green I'm going to be using this old lumpy sheet which I tried to clamp down but it was much too big and it didn't work and it ended up warping and bending. The sheet was a complete fail and it's unusable how it is but however when I melt it down it will be completely reusable and it will make a good sheet material. If you don't have a sheet like this you can just use green lids and it will come out with exactly the same results. So now it's time to start melting down the plastic and for melting it down I'm just going to be doing on an old baking tray which I've dedicated for making HDPE since when any of it gets on the metal it sticks to it and really doesn't want to come off. 
To stop the HDP from sticking to any of the surfaces of the tray, I'm going to be placing down some non-stick cooking paper, which will do fine in the temperatures of the oven. So that these large pieces melt down quicker, I've just snapped them up into smaller pieces. The temperature that we want to be melting the HDP down in is 175 degrees Celsius, and I'm just going to be achieving that in just a normal cooking oven. Some other people on the internet have also used toaster ovens and things like that. The main point is that as long as you get the HDP around 175 degrees, it'll work properly. Any hotter and it'll become too sticky to work with and might create some toxic fumes. But at 175 degrees, no fumes are created and the HDP is moldable just like chewing gum. My oven is also set on normal oven heating. So then avoiding the awkwardly placed dog, we can then put the first pieces of HDP into the oven. Of course this would normally be lids, but since I've got this leftover material, I'm just going to be using this. Since those pieces are very large, they're going to take a long time to heat up, so while that's happening, I'm going to prepare the mould for the HDP to be pressed into. This mould is incredibly simple, and it's basically just a block of wood with four more pieces of wood cut really badly put on either side. You can basically make this however large you want, and then it's got this big piece of wood which presses down onto it. As you can also see, I've lined it with baking paper so that the HDP won't stick to any of the rough wood. Other people from the Slingshot forum have also used the insides of aluminium cans, which apparently work really well. After about 30 minutes, my first batch of HDP has completely melted down. Since the HDP is very sticky and it's above the boiling point of water, I'm going to be wearing some gloves to protect my hands from the heat, but of course they don't have to be pink. Just to make the HDP easier to work with, I'm just going to scrape it closer into the middle using just a normal chef's knife. Once that's done, I'm going to start to apply a layer of blue lids. For mixing the combination of green and blue, what I'm going to try and do is make a completely flat layer of blue lids with no in-between bits of green. A lot of other HDP tutorials say that you have to chop the lids up, but in the end that's just a big waste of time in my opinion. Since the lids are so thin they only take about 5 minutes to melt, and it may take you about 10 minutes to chop all of your lids up, then only save you 5 minutes in the end. The only scenario where you'd really need to chop up your lids is if you're putting it into a small mould where there's not space to put all of the lids in at once. I then put the newly stacked piece of HDP in the oven and about 10 minutes later I take it out and it's all completely molten. I can then scrape it all back to the middle and then realign it and start to add more lids. I find that with large amounts of material like this you can take your time because it takes a very long time for all of the layers to cool. Now that I've got the material as large as I want I'm going to start to try and create some cool patterns in the HDPE. In my last tutorial I continuously folded it until it made some really cool contouring effects with lots of different layers. This time I'm going to try and twist it like it sometimes is done with Damascus steel. Obviously this isn't going to have the same effect as Damascus steel since it has very different properties when heated and it bends in a completely different way but hopefully it will create some really really cool swirling effects when shaped. So first just using a chef's knife I slowly lift it off the baking tray and fold it over and pressing it down to be careful to remove any air bubbles that may have been trapped in between the molten layers. Once I've got it completely folded into a small square it's getting quite hard to shape so I need to put it back in the oven. Once I take it out of the oven after only about 3 minutes it's nice and molten again and I can now start to roll it into more of a cylindrical shape. Once that's done, using some really thick gloves so that the heat doesn't get transferred into my fingers, I'm going to pick it up and start to twist it clockwise. This will not only stretch out the HDPE but it'll also help twist it and mix all of the colours together and make it look really really cool. As I twist it, I try to keep the HDP from separating into different pieces. After about 5 minutes of twisting, it becomes a bit too hard to twist, so I have to put it back in the oven yet again. Once it comes out, I can twist it even more, and I've twisted it so much that all of the colours are completely mixed now. Then put it back in the oven yet again, and now it's time to put it into the mould. I folded it into a sort of S shape so that it could fit inside the square mould. I then set the oven on slightly higher, just above 175 degrees, and put in the mould with the HDPE inside. Then I also put some baking paper over the lid of the mould so that when I press it down onto the mould it won't get stuck with the HDPE. Once that's done I can then press it down onto the HDPE and hold it down very tightly until it squishes the HDPE flat. 
I then quickly use my vice and two G clamps to tighten up the HDPE and I need to make sure that as I tighten it up it stays completely level and I don't tighten up one edge more than I tighten up the other creating a sort of triangle wedge shape that I don't want. As you can see I've squeezed so hard that some of the molten HDPE has started to seep out of the edges of the mould. After about 5 minutes of cooling I'm going to come back and then start to tighten up all of the clamps even more. This is because as the HDPE cools it shrinks and tends to buckle but this will ensure a very smooth surface. After another 10 minutes has passed I'm going to continue to tighten up the clamps. This piece of HDPE is probably going to take about an hour to cool down because it's quite a large piece so for every 10 minutes in that hour I'm going to continue to tighten up all of the clamps so that it ensures a very smooth surface. After an hour's cooling it's time to remove all of the clamps and see if this HDPE worked. Due to the baking paper the HDPE pretty much just falls out of the mould and there's no chiselling or leverage required. The material is still quite warm so I'm holding it at the edge but it looks really good so far. It's almost a completely perfect square shape and as well it's completely flat and there's not many imperfections at all on the surface. I'm chopping off one edge so that I can see how the HDPE looks on the inside and see if the pattern's worked out. This is what the edge looks like once it's sawed down and you can see the really unique patterns left by the twisting. Remember to keep all of the offcuts of the HDPE from the mould because you can remelt them down into more sheets which are really useful. Using this method there's pretty much no limit to your creativity and you can mix whatever colours that you want. Here I'm mixing a combination of lots of different colours of lids to try and get a really varied piece of sheet material. I melted it, prepared it, folded it and shaped it in the exact same way that I did with my first piece. This is what it looks like once I take it out of the mould. Because it was thinner it was much quicker to cool and it's got a very very smooth edge. Then using the sheet HDP which I made in this tutorial I've created this new tail hammer slingshot. There's going to be a full tutorial next weekend on how to make this including the process of welding the sheets together which I used which avoids using any glue. In the past I've tried many glues on the HDP but it's pretty much resisted them all so welding was obviously the simplest option to go for. Just using a heat gun I heated up all of the different layers and then clamped them together. The finished result was a very very nice waterproof durable strong lightweight slingshot that also floats when you put it in water. So thanks for watching guys I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe for more future videos not only on slingshots but on a lot of other weapons. I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button down below because I put a lot of time and effort into editing and creating this tutorial. If you do manage to make something using this HDPE then please send me some images or a video of whatever you've made.